Adapter Streamliner is a simple reference and metering plugin. The plugin helps you to make sure your mix or master will translate well to digital streaming platforms like YouTube and Spotify. Hi, I'm Marlon and welcome to the White Noise Studio. Adapter Streamliner does not add anything to the sound and it will not mix or master for you. It will give you a reference to how the different compression codecs sound on various streaming platforms and how much loudness compensation is applied. I noticed with my own mixes in tests and of course out of experience that the stream on Spotify usually sounds fine, but on for instance Bandcamp it sounds a lot worse. We'll get to that later. The plugin is best used on a mix or master after all of your bus processing. So after the master, it will be after your end limiter so you have the right input to the plugin. For this video, I will show it on the track inserts. To understand how the plugin works, you simply have to know that there are five sections. The loudness metering, the dynamic range meter, the peak metering, the codex and streaming platform section, the reference track section. The plugin measures in LUFS, which is a unit which measures the loudness over a period of time and gives you a weighted average loudness. There's short term, momentary loudness and integrated. Integrated is for streaming platforms the one which is important. That's why it's so big and orange over here. For instance, YouTube measures the loudness of your entire video and adjusts the loudness to minus 14 loves if your audio over the whole track is louder. I made a whole video about that, the link is in the description below. The target in green has to do with what you have set in the platform and codec section. More on that when we get to that part in the video. The dynamics section shows you how compressed or dynamic your audio is. The PSR or peak to short term dynamics ratio will tell you how loud the audio is with a number like this. 14 to max is high dynamic, 10 to 14 dB is dynamic, 8 to 10 dB is competitive, 7 to 8 dB is loud, 5 to 7 dB is squashed, 3 to 5 dB is crushed, 1 to 3 dB is flatlined, or as we call it, a sausage. This song is loud because of an artistic and musical choice. This track sounds best when it's dense. The PSR meter also shows it's loud with hints of competitive. The dynamic range is also shown in a graph for highest and lowest dynamic range. This is interesting when you want to compare and study the dynamic buildup of a commercial track. I can't show you with a commercial release because I don't want a copyright claim on this video, so I will show you with this bluntly cut up track. You can see the different dynamic ranges. This could be the verse with more dynamic range, and this the chorus where the audio is less dynamic and more compressed. This can be used to learn and compare with other mixes. The target level can be set manually and is recommended on what you think needs the loudest part of the track to be. The true peak will show you what the true peaks are of the audio to check if the audio clips or not. This is useful, especially when we get into the codex, you will see how that can change the true peaks. Which leads me to the codex and platform section. Besides the metering section, the other important part of this plugin is the codex and platforms section. But first I have to tell you this important disclaimer. There's an issue when demonstrating this plugin for you here on YouTube. And that is YouTube. To be more specific, it's the YouTube compression. The compression codec does its job pretty good, but it's still a compressed audio codec which these other compressed codecs will go through for this video. And also when I export my video, that's another compression codec which the audio goes through. It's one compression codec going through another compression codec going through another compression codec. Three stages of compression. But this means that every codec you will hear in this video if you are able to notice the difference, we'll have gone through two more codecs before you hear it. And those are the Video Export Audio Codec and the YouTube Codec. And will sound a bit worse than it actually will be when you do the export and upload. 
So to compensate for audio in this video, I actually used two extra instances of Streamliner on the master bus after the end limiting. And by doing that, I will have a reference how it will sound in YouTube. One of the plugins was set to simulate the video export codec and that's 320 kilobit AAC. And the other Streamliner was set to the YouTube codec so I could be sure you could actually hear the differences of the codec demonstrated. And I switched the YouTube codec around to have a reference. And by doing that, I already demonstrated one big plus of the plugin. You can monitor in real time how your mix will sound on a specific platform, in this case, YouTube. There will be a video specifically for content creators and people who work with video on how to utilize Streamliner to get the best audio. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to not miss out on videos on this subject. Okay, let's go over the codecs and platforms for real now. You can select them here. First, codecs. Let's select MP3. This will show a bunch of variation in quality and tiers, which are the bit rates. The 320 kilobit high quality codec sounds fine, but watch the true peak meter. This track was limited to minus 0.5 dB, and you can see why I did that. Using the MP3 codecs at highest quality already introduced some peaks which weren't there. Now I have enough headroom, so that won't be an issue with this codec. Let's switch to the lowest quality. It takes a little while to switch and buffer. It sounds horrific at that low bitrate. It completely kills all high frequencies and introduces a lot of aliasing, which was to be expected. And watch the meter. It introduces even more peaks and even clips on occasion. Let's go to 96 kilobits. And the clipping is within the limit. So I compensated enough with this master for normal MP3s. And Streamliner demonstrated perfectly how the MP3 codec handled the audio. There are a bunch of other codecs. Org 4 bis is used for, for instance, Spotify, and YouTube uses AAC. Let's check ARC 4 bus high and low. I'll switch between them. You'll hear the stereo width collapsing in the lowest setting, but the overall sound stays intact. And a lot of clipping is introduced. Streamliner lets you really easily check how all codecs sound. These codecs are all used in streaming platforms, so let's check out some of those. Streamliner offers a lot of platform checks, as you can see here. There are major platforms, as well as less known ones. Although I don't see TikTok yet. You'll see when you select Spotify Premium, the codec ARC 4 bis 320 is used. And it also shows these numbers at the end. These are the normalization levels the platforms use. For Spotify, it's minus 14 loves. In red is marked how much your audio will be compensated on the platform. To have an honest number, you must play the entire track from start to finish because the loudness is calculated over the entire audio of a track. In this case, the audio would be lowered by 5.7 decibels. If I would check this audio how it sounds on YouTube, you'll see the codec change to AAC 256 kilobit. The loudness is the same. Here are the numbers for the other platforms and you'll see NA, which means that SoundCloud and Bandcap don't compensate for loudness. Although Bandcap is the best platform out there for bands and artists, I have always disliked the streaming quality of Bandcamp. Let's check if that is still the case. You notice the dynamics change, especially in snare. It sounds a lot flatter with the streaming codec. Now, one of the cool things of Streamliner is that with these platforms and the loudness levels shown, you can match your audio to the loudness of that streaming service by pressing match. It will compensate the audio, so you can check how your audio sounds in comparison to a streaming platform.
So use that and play a reference track in, for instance, Spotify, and do an A-B check. Now, to compare the loudness inside your mix or master project, you can use the reference function of Streamliner. You load in an audio file and it will be on the B of the AB toggle. A will be the audio of your project. Simply press match and your reference track and the audio of your project will be matched to the streaming platforms. In the reference track, by the way, you can add markers, let it loop and zoom in to pinpoint on a specific area for reference. If you want to check different codec compression types, you have to do it in a different way than you would expect. Simply export like you normally would doesn't work since Streamliner is completely bypassed in export automatically. You have to use the export setting in the plugin itself. For that, you load in an audio file in the reference dialog and select which format it should export. With the platforms, it automatically exports in the various bit rates, which is nice for comparing. It does not do loudness adjustment, just the audio compression. The reference section also allows you to save the levels, which you then load in for reference for mixes like I did with this Tamus preset. A nice little addition. And as you can see, Streamliner has also included a lot of levels presets of other commercial and popular tracks for you to check out. Adapter Streamliner falls in the category of not sexy but very useful tools. When you do audio for video platforms, audio mixing or mastering, and have audio which is uploaded to streaming platforms on a regular basis, this is one plugin which makes your life a lot easier and will speed up your workflow and a being a lot. This will save you the guessing and double checking if your audio will actually translate to all the streaming platforms out there. If you want to find out how loudness normalization works on for instance YouTube, you must check the video displayed on screen right now. Please remember to subscribe and share this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!